It's Monday, April 31st, 2012. Get ready for another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. More speculation into the death of Andrew Breitbart as his coroner turns up dead in Los Angeles and arsenic poisoning is suspected. Then, according to a newly released instructional video by the NSI, public photography is terrorism. Plus, the Department of Justice confirms Russian troops to train on U.S. soil. And finally, exposing false flag terrorism and battling the TSA has now become a congressional campaign issue. Alex Jones talks with Kurt Haskell. All this and more coming up tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. And now, Alex Jones. Let's get right into the headlines. The ultimate green bombshell. New study finds wind farms actually cause climate change, not to mention killing all the local birds. After years of searching, it appears that scientists have finally identified an actual cause of climate change. Wind farms. Well, in Telegraph reports, usually at night, the air closer to the ground becomes colder. When the sun goes down and the earth cools, but on huge wind farms, the motion of the turbines mixes the air higher in the atmosphere that is warming, pushing up the overall temperature. Satellite data over a large area of Texas. You know, you can't drive anywhere in West Texas to see the beautiful mountains anymore. It's all just wind farms that Al Gore makes money off of. That is now covered by four of the world's largest wind farms found that over a decade, the local temperature went up almost one degree Celsius as more turbines are built. Kind of like Bill Gates owns the big weather weapon company. He can just launch tornadoes whenever he wants and say, pay Al Gore and me money, or it's all over. And there's the spoils of green fascism, death by turbine. Yeah, that's the reports I've seen. You want all your local birds dead? <laughs> You want dead birds? You want blood? You got it. Blood on the streets, blood on the rocks, blood every which way, you got it. You want some dead bats? We got it. If you want blood, we got it. Hmm. Continuing here. Uh, this could have long-term effects on, on wildlife. Who cares as long as it goes to select contributors to the globalists? <laughs> this could have long-term effects on wildlife like GMO does you're not worried about in the immediate areas of larger wind farms, really. It could also affect regional weather patterns as warmer areas affect the formation of clouds and even wild species. Gee, you think chemtrails are having any effect? What about those? But again, the government loves us. Oh, but here's another report. If we just kill the humans, the earth would be saved. This was in Reuters, this was in AP, everywhere it was collectivize everything. Give your money to Lord Rothschild and have a huge die off of humans. Gee, won't the world be wonderful when you're dead? And the yuppies are like, yeah, kill me. Of course they mean their neighbor. I hate my neighbor as much as I hate myself. International scientific order needs to facilitate the big die off. That's a quote. Top UN advisor says, and it goes overall, of the report, it says economic and other developments that lead to the reduction in population towards an optimum level for maximization of quality of life, they mean for the globalist, i.e. environmentally benign development that reduces the birth rate. Well, the West is having 1.3 kids for every two people, so we're, we're pretty much dead. Great job. And uh, one in 58 has autism, soon to be one in five. The cancer rates are 10,000 percent in kids. What a quality of life. Lots of little coffins you sons of bitches are involved in. There's no teleprompter here, you understand. Furthermore, the emeritus professor writes bluntly, the big die-off has already begun. <laughs> Absolutely right. Uh, the gullible public takes those big old juicy shots full of cancer viruses and drinks that fluoride water. Every day, another scumbag talks about how they're murdering us, like the White House signs are bragging about that fluoride. Nothing like bone cancer sevenfold in men. Another little gift by the chicken neck nerd. <laughs> oh, the guy on a motorcycle acting tough isn't a threat. It's the little nerd who people weren't nice to in school. 
He sits back and goes, keep drinking that water, keep taking those shots. I'm murdering you. <laughs> I'm murdering you, and I'm going to go on murdering you because I'm trendy. Let's continue. We've got uh, the federal government and other groups. NSI instructional video, public photography is terrorism. Well, sure, government's going to cram a camera up your rear end, but you don't videotape them, you're going to prison in life like folks in Illinois. According to the video, street photography and photography of public buildings provides justification for further analysis by the narcotics trafficking police. Although the video emphasizes the photography and other similar activities are protected, activities under connected to other suspicious activities that would incite potential terrorism like the feds blowing up, blowing up Oklahoma City. This may cause the officer, I mean the federal minion, to conduct additional observation or gather additional information, again taking into account the totality of circumstances. Continuing here with the news, we have CBS. CBS runs defense for everyone's terrorist FBI flyers, where they say wearing jeans, having children, having a cell phone, ordering coffee, paying with cash. They actually get on there and say, hey, the war on terror against Al-Qaeda that the feds are giving control of Libya and other countries, that's over. The war is on you. So get used to it. We're going to have drones watching you. In a brazen headline story entitled, Are You a Terrorist? CBS 12 leads the uh, flyer's credence by completely failing to mention the fact that they include a list of mundane behaviors that have nothing to do with terrorism or any relation to suspicious activity whatsoever. How about see something, say something, the feds getting Mutalib on the aircraft, the underwear bomber, without a passport, that's coming up. Or how about the New York Times admitting that the FBI is staging terror Saturday? That was in their news. How about that? How about we don't learn to be little fear-filled minions of the system and realize criminal foreign corporations are staging terror attacks to sell us on tyranny? Continuing with teleprompter free news. Trail of death. Breitbart coroner turns up dead. Arsenic poisoning suspected. Well, no, the police say he's dead from poisoning, but they're saying, move along. He died of poisoning. We're not sure what did it. Go back to sleep, America. Everything is just fine. And finishing up with the story we covered Friday that people had trouble believing. Yes, it's true. No, it's not just true that coroners about to release a report die. That's no big deal. No, it's true. DOD confirms Russian troops to train on U.S. soil to take on the American people. The Department of Defense has confirmed foreign military reports that Russian troops are set to target terrorists on American soil as part of an unprecedented joint drill for the United States, which will take place in Colorado next month. Airborne troops from Russia are set to take place in the drills focused around targeting terrorist Americans. The American pigs do not like the Federal Reserve, die. Continuing, although it marks the first time Russian troops will train on U.S. soil, soldiers from a plethora of different nations have been involved in similar drills for well over a decade that we have documented. We're about to come back with Mr. Haskell with some key intelligence. He's running for Congress, but first, Hunter S. Thompson. We have a quote for you. Politics is the art of controlling your environment. That is certainly true. The elite want to get us out of the environment and to trick us into our own extermination, they are creating this artificial habitat of fear to get us into their trap so they can then accelerate their soft kill operations. All right, we'll be right back after this quick break. If you're not a subscriber, become one today. You're out there watching it online at YouTube and other sites where millions of people watch the show every week. That's great. Why not get five or six memberships for the price of one, 15 cents a day, Get a 15-day free trial, prisonplanet.tv, and help us expand our reporters, our writers, our researchers in the face of the globalist. There's nowhere where you get a bigger bang for your buck than prisonplanet.tv. Good evening. I'm Todd Foster reporting for Infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. 
This evening, we're going to be discussing the issue of driver's license requirement here in the United States. What is a driver's license? Do you need a driver's license? Is there any law requiring you to have a driver's license? A driver's license is required for one who is conducting commerce on the highways. Now, if you're doing personal travel along the highways or personal transportation, there's no law saying that you need a driver's license. Now, I'd like to read to you something here from Bovier's Law Dictionary. One employed in conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle with horses, mules, or other animals. Now that is Bovier's definition of a driver. There's no mention about personal transportation in there or anything. Now notice under part three of that definition, it states that the driver must be of good habits for the journey and possess good skills. Because if he's not, and there's an accident or an injury, the driver and his employers, yes, that's right, I said employers, are responsible. Now, while the definition of driver does change a little bit over the years, there is a U.S. Supreme Court case, Reno v. Condon, which states, the activity licensed by state DMVs and in connection with which individuals must submit personal information to the DMV, the operations of motor vehicles is itself intricately related to interstate commerce. definitely has a problem. A problem? Many. And I believe the problem with America is that we think we have too many problems. I mean, there's a lot of problems. Gosh, where do I start? Texas. I would have to say D.C. To greed in politics. Our economy. Poverty. Freedom. Corruption. We are just never satisfied. It's always more, more, and more. It's not really much of a problem. I think America's problem is that people think have more money than they think they have. I think it's ignorance. I think people need to be more aware of the political landscape. Maybe that everything's so spread out and uh, you have to like drive. The uh, underdog, middle guy is always getting screwed. Belief in God, the lack thereof. Our deity or what we serve is money. Agree, money. I work close to like Medicare. Medicare will stop taking care of a patient when they don't have money. Um, I see people that rob banks. Why do they rob a bank if they're needing food or if they're needing clothing? Why don't they rob the food? Well, I'm afraid for the short term that there's going to be more income disparity from the, the very rich and, you know, more loss of middle class. I mean, in the end, it's all about money. I mean, I think it definitely has a purpose if it's used for the right reasons. We're so infatuated as money is a need, but in actuality, a need is something like water. If you don't have water on the earth, then we all perish. But money, if money disappears at any time, we can still survive. I also work for CBS Sports, and when I brought them this story, they told me that they would not report on a government agency that involved children unless a child dies. The mainstream media's failure to honor the First Amendment is killing true investigative journalism. Greedy corporations have turned it into a catalyst by which to carry out their own global agenda. For years, they have used strategically placed advertising and propaganda, keeping the public misinformed of the truth and in an almost catatonic state of consciousness. The media is bombarding us with distraction and disinformation to keep us in the dark about what's really going on with our country, which is our rights are being taken away and our food and water are being jacked. And it's kind of like that Star Trek episode where Picard is captured by the Cardassians. And in order to break his will, they torture him and they show him four lights and tell him it's five. 
And that's what the media is doing to us. They're showing us four lights and telling us it's five. And at the end, Picard starts to see five lights. So we're going to have to counterattack that by becoming the media. Because right now, we need the truth. So I interviewed several people, and um, I'm, I'm presenting them to you here at InfoWars. And um, the first will be Lori Kelch. And Lori is a nutritional educator and adjunct professor at Antioch University. And she has a tasty treat for us, which is a McDonald's hamburger that is over 11 years old and has completely preserved and petrified. No decomposition. And here is the interview with Lori Kelch. I think sometimes I'm a little bit more concerned with what we don't see in our food, especially something that would allow um, this kind of thing to last uh, <laughs> beyond a date, which should be maybe 24 hours. Um, and I, I think that we have to understand that these kinds of additives um, can be very toxic and that we can have reactions to them but we don't necessarily even know what we're reacting to because we don't know what's in the product. It doesn't require labeling on fast foods um, if there's preservatives, additives, colorings, that kind of thing. Um, so maybe we need to, to look at a push for better disclosure. Kyle J. Marion reporting, Syracuse, New York, FEMA Region 2. And uh, we're broadcasting today down here outside of the Bistro Elephant in Armory Square in Syracuse, New York. What we're doing today is we're down here to try to get some impressions from people as to how free they feel since 9-11. So we're going to ask some folks if they feel more free since 9-11 and if they know anything about the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA. So that's what we're going to do and hopefully we'll be getting some people here sometime soon. Thanks. feel safer since 9-11. Yeah, why not? Do you feel safer? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, do you feel more free since 9/11, or do you feel less free? Since I've always felt free. You know, I'm just I don't let that stuff kind of bother me. It's just not to my not not your not my nature. Okay. Um, I mean, things are going to go on in this world anyway. So I understand. Um, I had. Have you ever heard of the National Defense Authorization Act? Probably not, because I don't read the paper a whole lot. Okay. Well, what it is, is on December 31st, President Obama signed it. it. It allows the president to order the indefinite detention of American citizens or any other uh, combatant anywhere in the world uh, if it's a threat to national security. Were you aware of that law? Absolutely not. Okay. 1984. You know, here we go. Right. Well, what we're doing today, and the reason we're doing these interviews is we're trying to, you know, raise awareness to it here in Syracuse. I'm reporting for Infowars.com. I'd like to give you a copy of the Constitution. We're giving these out to people today okay. who take the time to talk with us, as well as this. Uh, this is the website where we're going to be uploading the video of the interviews once we get it ready. Okay. And uh, the last thing I want to hand out is a handout on the NDA, which tells you about the law. It was passed on New Year's Eve by President Obama when we were all getting ready to celebrate the new year, they were run, running this through. Now section 1021 of that law allows the president to order the indefinite detention regardless of whether we're a citizen or not. Of Thrusting forward, we have Illuminati, Templars, Masons, and Hitler's Aryan occult agenda. Thus the stage is set for the New World Order players. The Rothschilds, Bilderbergers, Skull and Bones, Satanists, etc all claiming to be descendants of these hybrids. Their mission, to protect these bloodlines and to obtain everlasting life from the life force from blood, sex, and children. One of the main players, the British royal family. Now we've heard accounts of hidden lineage tied to Nazi Germany, abduction, sex slavery, murder, and satanic rituals. We have the brave testimony of Arizona Wilder's intense interview with David Icke, she being a mind-controlled sex slave and royal palace witness to the elites shape-shifting into reptilian entities and full-out satanic ritual murders. That said, 2011, New Year's Day, a body is found on the grounds of the Christmas vacation spot for the royals, Sandringham Palace. 17-year-old Alyssa Dimitriev was found a mile away from Sandringham in a field used for partridge and pheasant shoots for the royal household. Reports say that the body was placed there sometime in August or September 2010, ritual celebration months. The body was taken in 2012 to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital for further DNA testing. 
Also in August 2010, the time of the murder, a stream of dog deaths took place at the exact spot. The palace and a charity called the Animal Health Trust set out a notice requiring that all persons who walk their dogs there to fill out a, a questionnaire of where exactly they took their dogs, all in the name of tracking a possible virus. Subtle way to find a witness. Reports say the girl's body was lacking flesh and is difficult to determine cause of death. But what I found interesting is this, viewers. Prince Andrew, seen here in 2000, was 17-year-old Virginia Roberts, a victim of mind control and sex slave for the elites since the age of 15. Now here she is with Prince Andrew. Where are they, folks? You got it. Sandringham Palace. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die start purifying your water with pro pure my friends i've done a lot of research and the best gravity filter out there bar none is pro pure and it's available discounted at infowars.com its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth there's no priming required it's nsf 42 certified optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95 percent easy to set up and use does doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. And we are back on this Monday, April 30th, 2012 edition. And we're joined by a man who has a lot of courage, Kurt Haskell of Michigan. Now, to remind you who he is, uh, for new viewers, he and his wife, both lawyers from Michigan, survived the underwear bombing of two Christmases ago. And, of course, it did turn out that the story he told of the government getting him on the plane, getting him past security without the uh, proper identification, was true. A month and a half after he broke that on his blog and then my radio show, the Under Secretary of State, Mr. Kennedy, on C-SPAN, said, yes, we were ordered by an unnamed agency to give him a visa and help him. Incredible news, but it only showed up in a few newspapers in the United States. Now, Kurt came back many times to the show and covered the trial for us. He was the only witness the underwear bomber was going to call, obviously, I guess, to get a plea deal because he could blow the case, and then later that was dropped. So quite a saga, and there's been some new developments as well. But remember, we have a federal government caught not just shipping tens of thousands of guns to Mexico. CBS News, we now learn... Hand grenades, that's not from a gun shop, to destabilize Mexico, blame the Second Amendment. Thousands are dead. It's called a false flag. And we have them with their pants down, our hands in the cookie jar with this, just like Gulf of Tonkin. So I want to ask him about uh, Fast and Furious and just how deep that rabbit hole goes as well. But the big news, he's running for Congress. And I tell you, I love his policies. I love his stand on things. And I think people all over the country ought to get behind him for Congress. Here's your chance. And regardless, he's going to be able to be in those debates and those events and bring up the issue of false flag terror. Uh, here's an article out of the news right here. Kurt Haskell for U.S. Congress, 7th District. We'll give you his website and more. First, we'll cover why he's running for Congress, what he stands for, and then go back into the latest uh, on the underwear bombing that, of course, sold the naked body scanners so Michael Chertoff could make all that money while he radiates you. And of course, after you get radiated, you also get the groping. Now, at highway checkpoints. So the fun is just continuing. Uh, Kurt, survivor uh, of the attack, 
Thank you for coming on with us today. Uh, we had talked off the air. You were saying, maybe I'll just leave the country, but a true American spirit of liberty, you've decided to actually stand and fight, and we admire you uh, for your courage to speak out about the truth when nobody you know, was backing you up in the mainstream corporate media. Now other witnesses have backed you up with what you saw on the plane, and uh, now you've got the courage to put yourself out there for Congress. Tell us how you made this decision and what you stand for and the website. Sure. Well, you know, Alex, I, I was just a, a regular guy before the underwear bomber event happened. And, uh, you know, I, I was on your show a few days after it happened, and I really had a hard time believing what actually I witnessed and how it tied into everything. And, you know, it was only through a, really a two-year-long investigation on my part to figure out what really happened there, uh, you know, and the government's involvement. And let me tell you, that was a real eye opener for me. I, I had no idea this sort of corrupt thing happened, you know, before it became part of my life. So, you know, and obviously, you know, you bet, I've been on your show nine times. You've seen how I progressed, everything I did in the underwear bomber case, speaking out against it, going to court hearings, speaking to the media. I, I was relentless in that case and trying to get the truth out. And I, I think I did. It, as much as I could, at least to a few million people, you know, despite the fact that the government and the mainstream media didn't want to talk about it. So that was a real eye opener for me, you know, and I, I kind of lead my life believing that things happen for a reason. And, you know, I, I don't know why I saw the things I did in Amsterdam, but, uh, you know, something else strange happened in January this year. Maybe strange isn't the right word, but something to have me believe that maybe there's another reason I saw what I did at Amsterdam, you know, on Christmas day, 2009. And that was that the district lines for Congress were redrawn here in Michigan. And the Congressman who uh, is an office in my district, John Dingle, who's been in office 56 years, uh, was moved out of the district. And my county, Monroe County, was put into a new district with a very vulnerable incumbent and uh, no other Democrats running for the seat. And I just looked at this as maybe, you know, fate taking over that maybe I should jump into the race and run. I had really no desire to run for office before this. You know, obviously, I never talked about it on any of the shows or anything like that. It was really the redrawing of these lines that made me consider it. I looked at everything. I decided it was winnable, you know, if, if I get support from everyone. And uh, you know, who better to bring some of these things to light than myself? You know, a witness to government involvement in, uh, you know, an exaggerated or fake terror plot. Who better than me? Uh, you know, when, when the government speaks out about, hey, we need more money to fight the war on terror, who better to, to speak from the other side saying, no, you don't, me. I, I can't think of anyone else. Who better to speak out against uh, the Patriot Act, NDAA, CISPA, the Anti-Protest Act? Me. I, I can't think of anyone else better that would be in a better, better position to speak out against it than me. You know, and I, I look at these things and I think, um, you know, is there a reason that I saw what I did? Is there a reason the district lines changed? just as the underwear bomber case was ending. I don't know. Is there some higher power driving me, pushing me in this direction? I don't know. I, I guess we'll find out, though. But I think your, your viewers and your listeners got to see a glimpse of Kurt Haskell, the politician, during, Kurt, uh, during the underwear bomber case when you saw Kurt Haskell, the eyewitness. The relentless pit bull speaking out for what's right against the establishment against those that do wrong, against the media that won't report on something, that's a glimpse of how I'll be in Congress when I, when I get into Congress. And I think this country desperately needs someone like that, but a lot more than one person, many, many people like that, to change the course that it's been on. And by the way, if everybody starts resisting and running, a lot of us will end up getting in. Resistance is victory, but I was doing some research, I mean, this is one of the few races and few areas where it's silly that the Democrats aren't even putting a, a contender in because 
you know, they would have had a chance to beat the Republican. And obviously, you're nonpartisan. You're more of a constitutional libertarian. For you, you're just using, you know, the Democratic slot because, you know, that's the best chance you've got because there's not another Democratic candidate. And you have gotten some media attention. So this is very exciting. People need to volunteer. They need to donate. They need to get behind you right now, uh, like InfoWars is doing, because it would be wonderful to have you in Congress uh, when you had the courage uh, along with your wife to speak out and to you know uh, talk to the media and to you know, tell the truth and be proven right. It would be wonderful uh, to have you there, especially since Ron Paul he doesn't win the presidency, is leaving Congress. More people like you, it would just be amazing. For people around the nation, give us the prognosis. Tell us, tell us the lay of the land in Michigan, uh, the chances you've got to win, who you're up against, what people can do, and some of the other policies, things you stand for, type of media coverage you've gotten. Yeah, I, I just have to comment on that. I do have some Democratic views. I'm not, you know, I just want to be clear on that. But, um, you know, my main, my main views are the following. Uphold the Constitution. We need a hard money standard. And we need to restore the middle class. You know, but I, on some of these topics, I am Democratic, like pro-choice. Um, and you know, pro middle class and things like that. It's it's some of the Republican things like uh, pro war candidates and mix, mixing religion and politics that I just sure don't sure. Agree I with. wasn't trying but, to speak for you, but I mean, I knew your policy sure. on hard money. I've read your blog and stuff. So I mean, I would call you then what kind of like a libertarian Democrat? Yeah, I think that would be a better characterization of me. But you know, the the reason I want a hard money standard is to stop the growth of inflation. I want a hard money standard to stop all the printing of the money that's destroying the middle class by making gas and food prices so high. So let me ask you, you this, know, what would you do as Congressman that tens of billions was given to GM to move it to Brazil, China and Eastern Europe? I'm sure you know, Volt and a lot of Cadillac manufacturing is going to China and we actually paid our money, our tax money to move it. Uh, what would you do as Congressman about that? It's, it's insane. How can we do that? Well, there has to be some sort of uh, tax punishment for corporations that do that or, you know, a tax for importing their goods that they, that they import from these countries or a tax on uh, corporations that use very cheap labor and then import the goods. Well, sure. So I mean, on top of it, we have tax incentives to leave, but when that's not enough, our tax money is paid to move it. <laughs> That's like making you buy the gun they use to shoot you with. I mean, it's. it's I, I really wanted to answer one question. You asked me two questions ago, there, Alex, if I could, about the lay of the land here in yeah, Michigan. Go ahead. Something, yeah, go do that. Something really interesting with that. Now, I, I'm the only Democrat running for this congressional seat so far. There's still 15 more days to jump in against me. But, you know, I thought I would have the support of the Democratic Party to run for this seat. It's the opposite again, Alex. They, my own party doesn't even want me in. The heads of the party, you know, the voters do want me in, but the heads of the party, the state and the national party, they don't want me to win. What they're doing, and this is so hard to believe, that, but it's true. They're recruiting Joe Schwartz. Joe Schwartz is a lifelong Republican. He doesn't even live in our district. He's ex, an ex-CIA member, and they're telling him they'll give him all kinds of money to move into the district, switch parties to the Democratic Party, and run against me. It's insane. No, no, that shows right there that the power structure is absolutely scary to you. And again, if you look at even county sheriffs now, they're recruiting former CIA or FBI. And in Texas, something like half of them are former feds. They're just moving their operatives in to every position. So they're openly saying, I saw an article on that, move in, run against this Haskell. That shows that you're really a populist. I think that's the best term, a libertarian, you know, democratic populist. And they're scared of you. They're scared because they know you're not scared and that you're willing to tell the truth. I agree. But again, it, you know, it's just like I saw in the underwear bomber case, big government, the media, they're against me. You know, I, I need the help of the people here. Um, you know, and obviously I'm not going to get the monetary support from the public. So I'm going to need, I mean, some, from the party, I'm going to need it from the public. Um, you know, just a couple other things I stand for. You know, I want to stop these illegal and necessary wars, obviously, that are based on terrorism. I think your listeners know my position on that. Uh, I think we need to jail the bankers that are involved in all these scams that have brought the economy down. 
You know, it's just ridiculous. Stop the war on drugs. I want to legalize marijuana. You know, and have the government quit harassing people for that. Um, you know, and reform the bankruptcy law so people can get rid of their student loans and get rid of the negative balance on their mortgages. Oh, but that's not free market. But what is the Republicans tell us, the establishment neocons, is giving trillions to foreign banks on their fraudulent derivatives. That's, that's free market. But these rip-off loans where people are paying loan sharking rates that can never get a job with these worthless degrees, 53% of them, you know, cutting back on those or trying to save the economy, that's not free market. We can't do that. Yeah, you, you know, it's just ridiculous. The government's just favoring big corporations over and over and over again in the banks and Wall Street. And there, 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 there needs to be a balance there. There's nothing left for the workers and middle class, people that are actually trying hard to Well, Henry to live Ford, love him or hate him, he said, I want my car to be inexpensive enough and I want to pay my people enough where they can buy my car. But see, the globalists, they don't want that. They want this fascistic economy where nobody in the general public has anything but a tiny elite. They're using poverty to control us. I, I mean, uh, break down more of your policies that sound awesome and your stances on things, but also what Michigan is like right now in this nationwide depression. Yeah, well, you know, Michigan's driven by the auto industry. And, and you know, that's part of my district too. So it, it's actually been hit hit really hard here although the past year or two it's been a little better there's been some recovery in the auto industry but yeah i mean it's it's a devastated economy here people are broke they're they're tired of the corporations taking all the money sending all the jobs overseas just like the you know the gm news they mentioned a minute ago oh you know the government gives gm money to send jobs overseas those jobs were probably here in michigan you know and that that's what we have here just lots of jobs um, the di the district I'm in is pretty equally split between Democrat and Republican. Um, you know, it's a lot. It's a it's a mix of uh, middle class areas and farm areas, but it's pretty evenly split. And the incumbent we have in office now is you know, very unconstitutional. As if you ask me, he's voted for CISPA, the NDAA, you know, the anti protest bill, and all that. So. You know, and he does it. All he does is what party leaders tell him to do. I, I think we really need people in office that will make decisions on what's right and not what party leaders tell sure. them to do. Sure, give us give us the website. Tell people out there what they can do in sixty seconds to get you into office. Sure. Well, Alex, you know I hate to go on the air and beg, but I really need contributions to my campaign with the, the party leaders not helping. No, me. if people want their country back, they've got to support candidates like you. They've got to put their money where their mouth is, because regardless, you're going to be able to get up there and and educate people during the process. They've got if we fire enough missiles at the enemy in the info war, some of the torpedoes are going to hit. Which is exactly what I'll do if I get into Congress. Nobody can intimidate me, buy me off, or do anything to me to get me to shut up, as you saw in the Underwear Bomber case. But Kurt Haskell for Congress.com, you can donate to my campaign on there. I would really appreciate it. I know you have, what, 3 million listeners, Alex? Yes. You know, if everyone just donates a little bit to me, I would have, you know, enough money to to get in office to put on a really great campaign and win which i think i can do and i i put in as much time on my own as i can i'm really trying to get as many votes as i can but you know it'd sure help if i could put some some ads in the mass media that would help out a lot and i would greatly appreciate it if your listeners would you know donate to my campaign well i hardly agree with you whether it's five dollars or ten thousand people need to do it because you have already done so much to expose false flag terror. Your case and then Fast and Furious together is opening up doors in people's perception where they're going, oh, now I see why they stage stuff. I mean, can you speak to what you would do in Congress day one if you got in? Day, well, you know, it, de it would depend on on what's, you know, what the pending issues are for that day. But just look at each issue compared to how I was in the underwear bomber case, that's what you'll see. You'll see me using the, the bully pulpit, you know, and the media to speak the truth on what's going on in this country and not speak the talking points, not lie to people, but to actually get the truth from people, to get 
answers that will actually help the country. And that's what you're going to see. You're going to see me sticking out for the people, calling out members of the government that are not following the Constitution, that are screwing over the public, you know, with, with their money and tax dollars. You're going to see me screaming about new unconstitutional laws that are proposed and that sort of thing. Day in and day out, no matter what the topic is, you're going to hear a straight answer from me. You're going to hear me call everyone out on the nonsense. You're going to see me on TV doing it, and hopefully, I can I can do that. And not only on the not only to help on the laws and the votes, but to change public opinion. And that's what we really 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 need. You you know that as well as I do, Alex. Tell me about the media. I mean, you say the Democrats have been running from you scared, trying to re uh, recruit a Republican to run against you. Just classic. Uh, uh, how has the prostitute media been behaving? Of course, they're, they're all for that plan, Alex. You know, if you, if you Google this, Joe Schwartz or my name, 7th District, Michigan, you'll see. They want Joe Schwartz to run. They want, not only do they want him to run, but you'll see the articles. Oh, great. Joe Schwartz might be running. Hooray. And then they don't even mention that I'm running. That kind of thing. You know, same kind of thing I got it during the underwear bomber case where they didn't want to talk about my story for two years. So even if somebody doesn't have 10 cents to rub together uh, or two nickels to rub together, to be technical, they should write letters to the editor. They should do YouTubes in support of you. They should uh, uh, help you get yard signs. I mean, it, it's simple, like a dollar or two pays for a yard sign. There's just basic stuff people can do. And if the whole Ron Paul type movement gets behind somebody like you for your honesty and integrity alone, I, I would support you. Even if I disagree with you on a few issues, it, it, it's about getting activist people into Congress. That's what it's supposed to be about. What would you do in Congress on the, on the underwear bomber front? On the underwear bomber front? Yes. Well, tell the truth. Tell the American people what really happened. Um, you know, uh, use it to get the body scanning machines out of the airport. Call out the people that use this as a crutch for further policies, which you see all the time. You know, we need this because of the underwear bomber case. We need that because of the underwear bomber case. That sort of so thing. So Kurt Haskell, uh, pro-liberty, anti-groping. <laughs> Yep, you got it. I'm an anti-groper, Alex, that's for sure. Well, that's not the American <laughs> way. You know, they want to change the American flag to uh, somebody's huevos getting grabbed by a pot belly. So, I mean, uh, um, uh, so now, 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 so now, now, why did, what happened to Congressman Dingle, Dingleberry? Uh, the district lines were redrawn and he was moved to a different district. So, you know, that's what, that's part of the reason I never considered running before because he, He's basically unbeatable. He's won 28 consecutive elections, and he's he's unbeatable. So when he was in my district, I never, ever even considered running for Congress. But now that the lines were redrawn and he's not in my district, I just look at it as, you know, some kind of higher power pushing me to run in the election. Just the timing of it all was just ironic. Well, now is the time people need to get in there and support you. Uh, Kurt, I want to get you on the radio show itself as soon as possible to recap everything that's happened, the false flag event you witnessed. Uh, but you know, my main reason, and I want you to recap all of that you know, briefly here today, but also on the radio, is because this is an example of people that are informed, people who've been listeners of my show, but also informed in their own right, being eyes and ears when there's false flags. I know this is intimidating the system. This is making them think twice before they stage some new event. They now know we're looking for false flag or staged inside jobs. They know we're looking for that now. Can you speak to that? Well, Alex, I would never be in this position if I wasn't involved in a false terrorist attack, honestly. You know, that's what opened my eyes. That's what led to me speaking out. You know, I, I was never in the press before this. I never... Uh, you know, went on radio shows or TV shows or anything like that. I really didn't think much of it. Now look at the monster the government created in me. You know, the headache I caused them throughout the underwear bomber case, going to the hearing, speaking at the sentencing, speaking on TV, speaking on radio, changing minds. And now I'm taking it one step further. And without, you know, without me being involved in that case, I would never have run for Congress at all. And look at the monster they've created. Now they have to go to the extent of trying to recruit 
someone from the other party who lives out of the district to move, to move in the district and run against me. I mean, look at the mess they're causing themselves. And think of how many people have woken up to this kind of nonsense because of my story. I, it has to be millions, I would think. So, you know, I, I, does that answer your question, Alex? Yes, I think it does. It, it, hundreds of thousands of us or millions of us just putting up a yard sign, calling talk radio, being involved, running for Congress, running for mayor, running for county commissioner, running for select man or person. All of that, we can literally just culture jam the entire spectrum and overthrow the false media, the false system and restore the republic. And, and in, in my own life, I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers, but I've got energy and action and common sense. And I have reached hundreds of millions of people on my YouTube channel alone, XM Radio, uh, over 100 affiliates, millions of listeners a day, uh, causing huge issues for the establishment. And there's other people out there more eloquent than I. It's all about everybody trying, and we'll all get better in the fight, and some of us will win immediately. Others will have success down the road. But regardless, we die on our feet instead of on our knees. You, yeah, you know, and you know what we all have in common is that we want the Constitution upheld. And we want people in Congress that will uphold the Constitution. And that's, you know, regardless of your other views, we need to only vote for candidates that will actually uphold the Constitution. And, you know, that, that should be the number one priority of everyone when they're actually going out to vote. Who, who will uphold the Constitution? And it's that person that I should vote for. And that should be their number one issue for everybody, because without the country upholding the Constitution, there's nothing left of it. Kurt, in closing, recap, as if you were on national TV, which I guess in a way you are, for laymen out there in a three-minute soundbite, what false flag terror is, what you witnessed, what you and your wife survived. Well, you know, Alex, again, I was just a regular person before all this happened to me. I was involved in what the media and government will tell you was a terrorist attack, but it was a terrorist attack that was aided and abetted by people in the intelligence community of the United States government. Uh, you know, it, as hard as that may be for some to swallow, I've proven it. I have all the evidence that, you know, it took me a two year investigation to figure out exactly what happened there. And that's what happened. And, you know, just because I've actually proven the case, doesn't mean that the media won't stop me from informing everyone of it. And that's been, you know, another awakening that I've had is that the mainstream media just won't tell everyone uh, about what its government is doing to its citizens. And, you know, I, I'm not saying the government tried to kill me. You know that. Um, it was a, a dud bomb that was provided to the bomber. And it's because of this awakening that I've taken it upon myself to speak out for the truth and the people, and the Constitution, and try and do what's right, and try and inform everyone about what's happened. And now, with the redrawing of the lines here in Michigan, the, the congressional district lines, uh, I look at it as a higher power driving me to make this effort to get into Congress, to continue what I've been doing, speaking out uh, for what's right, speaking out for the people and speaking out for the Constitution of this country, you know, before there's no Constitution left of it. And hopefully your, your listeners will help me do that. Like I said, the, the party heads uh, are not supporting me, but the people of the party are. But because the party heads are not supporting me, I need contributions to, you know, to fund my campaign and give me a legitimate shot. And, and your listeners can donate to me on KurtHaskellForCongress.com, or like you said, just go on the internet and, you know, talk positively about me and my campaign, campaign leave, you know, good messages on some of my videos and, and tell others to vote for me and that sort of thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best and hopefully your listeners will do their best in trying to make the country a better place. Kurt, one other point I wanted to raise. Um and that's the New York Times. I was blown away Saturday when I got up and was reading you know, news, as I do, to my wife's chagrin when I do it 10 hours a day. <laughs> and uh, there was a headline, terrorist plots hatched by the FBI. 
and it goes on to admit what I've covered, what you've covered. It's not like they infiltrate bad groups. They go and lead white supremacists. They go and lead the new Black Panther Party saying, burn down Florida. They go and it turned out the White House was involved in that. They go out and they create. I mean, they were running the Fort Hood killer and who for two years and got him to do it. And we're all a locky and all this. I mean, they are actually creating it. And most of the time, finding people with 75, 80 IQs, you know, serious, uh, you know, near mentally retarded level people. Uh, they are finding mentally ill people, getting them out of prison. I mean, I could go downtown and go, here's 10,000 to a homeless guy or a schizophrenic. Dress up in a military outfit, say on tape, you're going to blow up. The, the Texas Capitol, and I'll give you $10,000, hypothetically. Of course, I wouldn't do that. I'll try to edit that and say I said it. And I could have not just them talk about it. I could give them a mall off cocktail for 10 grand. They'd do it. So it's so evil. And, of course, even Texas Monthly uh, 12 years ago gave uh, the FBI a bum steer award finding these alcoholic Klan members who weren't even in the Klan in a, in a trailer who couldn't get out of bed once a week. They were so alcoholic with you know liver failure, all of it and paid them tens of thousands to talk about it blowing up the White House and stuff. And I mean, it's fake. It, it's fake. It, again, they're not infiltrating groups, which I would be fine if they thought a group was violent, find out what they're doing. They're not doing that. They're trying, just like the First World, uh, First World Trade Center, where they cook the bomb, train the driver, let them do the attack. I, I mean, this is so criminal. They probably grabbed Mutalib. What do you really think is going on with Mutalib? That's a question. Because look like he was drugged from what I heard. Grab him, drug him, mind control him, doesn't know who he is. Send him in. Tell him we're going to kill you and your family if you don't say you're guilty. Or is it more than that? Do they find a crazy person? I mean, what do you think happened with Mutalib? Well, now, first off, first off, the New York Times, I'm ranting, and then Mutalib. What do you think of this coming out and being so mainstream? It's shocking that the, the mainstream media is actually talking about it. That's a step in the right direction. Um, I agree with you. The, the um, FBI, CIA are actually not really infiltrating groups. They're leading the groups. And, you know, that's a real fine line to draw. But you're right. Look at the underwear bomber case, Abdul Mutla. He's not a very smart person. He could not have uh, put on this plot himself created this bomb, you know, got through security, you know, unaided by himself. He's not a very smart guy. You know, th this plot would have never happened without some significant help from uh, under undercover intelligence agents. It just wouldn't. And we see it over and over again, plot by plot by plot. The mainstream media screams, oh, another terrorist attack. And then they they don't talk about the FBI or CIA involvement in each plot. You know, it's just terrorist attack. And then, you know, three days later in, in small print, at bottom of an article, oh, but, you know, everybody was safe and could not have been hurt because the FBI gave him, a, you know, a defective bomb and therefore it was okay. Well, no, it's not okay. So that's kind of my response to that. I'm glad to see it, it's in a mainstream paper, though. But what, you know, what I think happened in the underwear bomber case, I think there were undercover intelligence agents. They, they posed as al-Qaeda. They, uh, they duped Ab Abdul Mutalab into thinking he was part of their, their group. They gave him a defective bomb. Where? I'm not really sure where, but I think uh, Umar thought it was a real bomb. I think he thinks he, he probably probably is a real terrorist, or he thinks he is. Um, and it was basically a sting operation that they like. So he's another Fruit Loop, low-grade moron they assessed and set up. Yeah, basically. Yep, you got it. Now, that saying that, I really am not sure why he pleaded guilty to every charge that requires a mandatory life sentence with no chance of parole when there are very lenient plea deals on Just the table. like we don't know why the U.S. government got him on the airplane. Except to take our liberties. This is right. But now think about that. You know, I've said on the show before, I knew Umar had very lenient plea deals going back to 2010. And to have him turn those down and plead guilty to a mandatory life sentence with no chance of parole just a couple of days after he announces, I'll be the only witness for him in his trial tells me there's something more going on there than what we know. You know, I hate to speculate, but I, uh, 
there, there is definitely something going on there that we know, don't know about it. Nobody ever pleads guilty to a mandatory life sentence. And let's no not forget, you're the only guy he was going to call as a witness. Right, right. Just a few days after he tells Judge Edmonds in open court that I'll be his only witness, look, here he is pleading guilty, uh, knowing he'll go to prison for life with no chance of parole. What you do you know, think that was about? Because we had all thought maybe that was a way to get lenience threatening to bring you in, but then he just pleads guilty. I mean, do you think some other deal was made? Well, that, that was my thought, too, that maybe it was for lenience, but the, the, um, the plea he made requires a mandatory life sentence, so there was not even a chance for leniency. So there's something more going on there, you know, and I hate to speculate because people will say I'm – some kind of crazy nut or whatever, but it's got to be either he's being threatened, he's being was being tortured in prison, or he was promised something, or his family was threatened. I, I don't I don't know though. But what else could it be? And do you have any ideas? Well, we know be? they torture people for fake confessions. They got KSM to confess to buildings that were bombed four years after he was in custody. When they threatened to torture his little kid, that was like, okay, I'll confess to killing JFK if you want, and crucifying Christ, I drove the nails in, basically, or he blew up the Titanic uh, along with, you know, everything else, maybe the Hindenburg. So, I mean, we just don't know. We just know he looks disheveled, drugged, they get him on the aircraft, all this happens. We don't know. We just know the official story is a fraud and was used to sell the naked body scanners. All right. Yeah. And to further this uh, war on terror, because there really are no legitimate terrorist attacks going on. You know, but what does this say about the power structure that the New York Times and others are coming out admitting it's all a fraud? Maybe people in the power structure have figured out that they're going to let total evil take over if they keep this police state going. You know, I, I don't know. It's only one paper so far, but what, you know, what does that say? I don't know. Be, are they realizing the country's crumbling, you know, by continually doing these things and there won't be any country left soon? I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just speculating. I don't know, but it, it certainly is shocking. You know the great lengths that I went to to have this story exposed in the mainstream media, and nobody would talk about it, hardly at all. So I really don't know what to make a, out of that at all. I don't. Well, your courage and your wife's courage uh, and being admonished by the judge was unprecedented. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, my point is your courage has really brought a lot of this to light, and if more people do it, you're a testament, an example of how people should behave, and God bless you. Uh, but uh, in closing uh, for the fifth time, because there's so many points to make, recap the admonishment of the judge, uh, you know, talking bad about you guys, unprecedented, and uh, how your judicial complaint went, because last time I talked to you, you were discussing a complaint. Yeah, well, uh, as you know, at sentencing, I gave a victim impact statement uh, that it's available on the Internet for everybody to see where, you know, I provided a very brief description of everything that happened because I was limited to five minutes by the judge, which usually you get to speak as long as you want if you're a victim, you know, and explain what happened. Um, I was limited to five minutes, and when I got done, Lori, my wife Lori, got to speak next. And as she was going up to give her statement, Judge Edmonds, who uh, was very angry at what I said in, in my victim impact statement, told her, I don't want you coming up here and talking about any government conspiracy in your victim impact statement, kind of yelling at her and intimidating Unbelievable. her. Unbelievable. And, and because of that, she cut out parts of her statement that talked about uh, Patrick Kennedy's testimony during the congressional hearings on the underwear bomber case. And she just, you know, basically said, you know, how it had affected her and, and cut that part out. So it got her to change what she was going to say because she was intimidated. Um, she came back to the office, thought about it. She wrote a complaint letter to Judge Edmonds herself asking for an apology. She got no response. Uh, she is, has not yet filed, but is considering filing a complaint with the Michigan State Bar. Uh, I don't know if she's going to do it or not. Well, I'm she's no lawyer. Let me just stop you. I'm no lawyer, but I follow law news every day. And I, I'm, this is unprecedented. I don't think I've ever heard of a judge tongue-lashing victims that survived the underwear bombing. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but are there a lot of cases of victims being admonished? I mean, this judge, please have your wife file the complaint so it's at least on record what a pig this judge is. Yeah, no, it's totally unheard of. Not not only that, it's it's totally unheard of for a judge to limit victims to just a few minutes each. Usually you get to speak as long as you want. You know, I, if it was up to me, I would have talked for an hour. There were only, uh, I believe, five of us that even showed up to speak. So it's not like there was a again, whole lineup. Of that's people. like congressional record. It's court record. It needs to be read into the record. Yeah. It's not, it's not like there were 200 passengers that were each going to talk for an hour and this would go on for a week. Only five even indicated uh, that they wanted to speak and showed up. And, you know, each one only spoke for a few minutes. So to have me speak for an hour or Lori speak for an hour would have been no problem at all. So that's unprecedented. And you're right. Can you imagine a judge uh, on a, a, victim's, a victim's only opportunity to tell the court how they feel about a particular case yelling at them before they even get up to speak? It, it's just totally absurd. Well, the only thing that will be absurd after this, or even more absurd, is if your wife does not file that complaint. I'm not trying to tell her what to do, but come on. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, if, if a judge did that to me, I, I, I would definitely be. I, I mean, I, I think you ought to have a blog about this judge. I mean, this is this is outrageous. But again, just like the Democrats are trying to run a Republican against you, uh, just like they're coming after you on every front, they're scared for a reason. And in law and criminology, we know why. Because where there's smoke, there's fire. They are acting guilty as hell, Kurt. You're right. It's it's really unbelievable. I mean, who, who would believe these things? I sure wouldn't. If you know, if it wasn't my life, but I witnessed it firsthand, time and time and time and time and time again. It's just you know, I don't know know what else I can say about it. My eyes are wide open now. I I think I have a really good grasp of everything that's going on in this country. You do. And you do. Well, listen, no, do. we're going to support you. We're going to get behind you. And regardless, we win. Resistance is victory. So everybody get over there and donate and support you for what you're doing. And we'll uh, put the website up here at the end of the show. One more time, plug the website. Yeah, KurtHaskellForCongress.com. KurtHaskellForCongress.com. Uh, let me just say this, Kurt, right now to quote or paraphrase Morpheus in the first Matrix. Neo, one cannot be told about the Matrix. One must see it. I've been physically attacked for exposing a corrupt federal judge in the Davidian civil trial and told to shut up or I'd be killed. I've had the government call up and tell me conversations I was having just so I would know it was the government and threatened to kill me and chop my wife's head off and stuff like that. I won't even say the rest of the things. I've had the globalists come to me, and again, as a journalist, somebody says, well, here's your offer. You know, this is under confidence, so I can't break the confidence. But I've been offered to sell out to the New World Order. And so many other things I can't imagine people out there watching who haven't lived what I've lived or haven't lived what you've lived or Ron Paul's lived. You just don't know. That's why another reason, a little secret reason I'll reveal here. The reason I tell people to get involved is because when they do, they're going to run into the devil. And by the devil, whether you believe in that or not, they're going to run into bad people. And that's when you're really empowered. When you actually run into them and see them oppose you, that's when you really begin to probe the enemy. And that's when you know how real it is. So if anybody wants to find out if the New World Order is real or not, go out and oppose them. <laughs> uh, you know, be on an airplane when they want to you know, stage an attack. You'll find out how real it is. Any views on that? I totally agree. You know, I haven't gotten to that level yet where they're actually threatening me. I just get to the level where they oppose me and ignore me and try and do everything they can to get in my way. I, you know, I guess if I get closer to winning the election, maybe I'll start seeing that. Oh, but there's no maybe I about it. There's no maybe about it. They're going to be digging through your trash. I mean, you're, I mean, you're ready for it. I'm ready. I, I expect it. You know, I, I've had this going on now in my life for two and a half years, not to that extent, but yeah, I, I, you know, I've seen it. Everything they can, they can do to get in my way and to oppose what I want to do, uh, you know, to help this country out. I've seen it. I, I expect many, many dirty tricks and games, you know, as the election gets Well, here's the deal. The deeper you get down the rabbit hole in the Matrix and the more you oppose their evil, it's like we're, it's almost rewarding. Like as they do bad things to you, no weapon formed against us will prosper. 
as you get deeper into it, you'll ju it'll, it'll just get crazier and crazier. Listen, you're, you're on the right path, my friend. Kurt Haskell, thank you so much for the time. Talk to you later. Thank you. Wow. What a powerful interview with Kurt Haskell. Uh, that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. You are not going to face the globalist empire until you get out on the field. You'll face their agents, their minions feeding on you at a low level. But there's nothing better than the enemy's fear, the fear in their eyes. Just commit, turn yourself over to liberty and light. Know that you're an imperfect vessel, but you're 110% given over to freedom and the spirit of liberty, and your life will blossom. That's all I can tell you. That's my experience, and I know that's what you're going to experience. I talked to Kurt Haskell when he was going to leave the country, I don't know, last year, and I said, Kurt, you're not going to find freedom there. This is worldwide. This is a new world order. I said, why don't you stand up and speak out even more? And that's all I told him. I said, you just ought to speak out. You ought to call press conferences. He found the best way to do it, running for Congress. And in the act of resisting, in the act of running, in the act of standing up, in the act of speaking out, he delivers victory. That's just like Ron Paul. We knew they'd steal the election. I didn't know he'd actually win the first few states and be the real leader. He was going to be the, the nominee. He would have beaten Obama. He would have been the president. They probably would have killed him. There would have been victory in that. They didn't let it get to that point. They cheated him up front. But the cheating came out now in the news last week. It was all over the news. Yeah, he really won all these first states. Just like I talk about almost every week, Don King used to make hundreds of millions on pay-per-view. But people figured out the fights were staged. They figured out people were taking dives. So he could make more money on bets. Don King killed the golden goose that was heavyweight boxing. I was a heavyweight boxing fan. I won't watch it now because it got corrupt. It got totally corrupt. The mainstream media is like a Don King fight. The New World Order is like a Don King fight. Let them cheat. But you've got to go into the arena to show they're cheating. You get it? Resistance is victory. 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 In case you didn't hear it, standing up against evil, standing up against corruption, learning to just recognize it is victory. And that's what it's going to take. Another amazing transmission tonight. Fabulous job with the crew. We are building our team. By the way, um, we got a big problem. <laughs> it's a good kind of problem to have. Looks like we're going to have around 1,000 entries to the Infowars.com, InfowarsNightlyNews.com reporter contest. If I'm going to be fair about this, and I've watched hundreds of them, it's going to take a month or two. And I, by the way, I don't have time for that. I want to hire the people. I mean, obviously the winners will get the prizes, $10,000 know, between the male and female winner. So one, two reporters. But then I'm going to have to start the interviews, make sure they want the job. They can come here. This is so big. And I'm going to watch all the entries. It, it, it might take five hours a night or something. I mean, this is insane. And then you've got to choose and you've got to watch and you've got to think and you've got to contact them and you've got to get them on air and you've got to do all this. But I think, I don't think I know, this is huge. This is huge for teleprompter free news because a lot of these entries say, hey, I mean, I'm doing this entry. I don't even want the money. I want to be a correspondent for you. And we've got entries in every state that are incredible. We've got entries from foreign countries. We've got, and I think we've hit the zeitgeist. If we can just organize things, hire the reporters, do all that, get a, get a big enough core team. We're going to launch the social network next week. That's finally done and ready. We're going to do all this. We can have reporters in every part of the world who also have their own site they can promote and things for consideration because everybody's got to survive and just go forth. I mean, I think this is going to make the Ron Paul revolution look like tiddlywinks. And I'm not poo-pooing that. It, things progress. Things become more advanced. Things, things, things grow. And we're on the cusp of something very big. The New World Order did not shut the Internet down in time. <laughs> you guys go ahead and try to pass this, but you only confirm everything we've already said. So...
it's a good problem to have, to have a thousand or more entries. Uh, and, and so many of them are just incredible because that shows that pool of talent out there for liberty that if they'll just take action themselves for their own news system, their own organization they create, or whether they work with us, whatever happens, I, I just feel bad that I can't make everybody a winner. I mean, if some donor came along and said, you know, here's $5 million, I could hire, you know, 30, 40 reporters maybe. But then they'd be organizing that. We would just go to hell. I mean, again, the world is complex. And the globalists try to use computers to make the complexity readable where they can control it. They can't control it either. They can't control you, the individual, who has incredible talents taking action. All right, I'm ranting. It's just that, I'm, I mean, I'm brainstorming here. I don't even know how to deal with this. When we're going to talk about it. We're going to... And it's all of you, the subscribers to PrisonPlanet.tv, who pay it forward to the millions of people every week that watch this on YouTube and other platforms for free. So if you're watching out there, you're not a subscriber, it's 15-day free trial, 15 cents a day. One membership, $5.95 a month is really six memberships. Yeah, six memberships is the price of one. PrisonPlanet.tv, so be sure and support us there. Like I said, great job, the crew. You guys and gals are awesome. And Lord willing, we will. I was politically correct. There are no gals out there. So we're trying to hire some women. <laughs> but great job, guys. See, I can't even lie on that small level. <laughs> we got some women working in the office, though, so I guess it's, it's real. They're a great part of this operation. Point is, we want some women in here, too. I'm Alex Jones signing off until tomorrow. Bye, Candias. That means go with God. <laughs>